in the late 80s, uh, GM, General Motors, came to me about a dealership over on Campbellton Road in Atlanta, and it was Freeway Buick. And they asked me to buy the dealership. They were going to put a minority in that dealership. A, a, uh, and the reason minorities are very important to General Motors, Ford, and all, everything was market share back then. And uh, minorities, the airports such as Atlanta, Houston, all the big airports, Chicago, they have to buy X amount of cars, most of their cars, from a minority dealer. So it behooved these manufacturers to put minorities in. A lot of times they'll put minorities in with a white investor. And uh, so I bought the dealership, I bought Freeway, and with the idea of going to Union City, they were gonna give me a Union City point, but a minority in Freeway. Well, sometime after that, uh, they had a dealer on the other side of town that was a Subaru dealer, dealer, and his manager was a, a Buick dealer on the Buick property, and they wanted to introduce me to the guy. He is a minority, and that was a Vander Holyfield. And at that time, a Vander Holyfield was the uh, cruiserweight champion of the world. So I went over and talked to him. We hit him, up, hit it off great, and. Uh, I ended up doing a deal where he would be the dealer. I'd be, he was the dealer on paper. And uh, I would be a investor there and we'd put a, a general manager in, which we did. So this was uh, in 1989. Uh, so everything was rocking and rolling. His manager was a guy named Ken Sanders, great guy. And uh, sometime after that, uh, Evander was going to fight for the championship, was going to fight Mike Tyson. And if you recall, in 1989, uh, that, that fight did not take place. And uh, he ended up firing uh, uh, Ken Sanders. So Evander, uh, at that time, we were partners. We were partners in the dealership. We were partners in real estate. Now, Vander asked me to help him manage these two other boxers. One was Homer Gibbons, which ended up being a world champion. Another guy was Romelis Ellis, who won the uh, he he won a uh, uh, won the Olympic uh, medals. And great guys, great great guys. So. As time went on, the car business was really changing big time. General Motors at that time was about to go bankrupt. Matter of fact, they were filing for bankruptcy. And the, the, uh, the hierarchy or the CEOs at that time, they were changing too. Smith was the CEO of General Motors. So the whole landscape of uh, General Motors was changing. You know, they were off the deal of just trying to get market share. They wanted to make money. They had to make money. So Evander and I signed a agreement with General Motors, uh, a, um, a minority uh, agreement where we were a minority dealer. And back then they had what is called a fast start. One thing that enticed me with General Motors, that fast start program, would guarantee your investment. So on paper, we had no risk at all, zero risk. Well, at that time, the car business, I had several other car dealerships. I had Toyota, Dodge, and all this. Well, General Motors going bankrupt, it was going south. So the dealership at that time, Evander was fighting for the world championship of Buster Douglas. And man, it was exciting times. I mean, we took hundred of our best friends out there to watch the fight, and we'd go, we'd go to all the fights, and then we had Homer and we had Romelis Ellis. So it was kind of exciting times. 
And at that particular time, Evander had a attorney, uh, uh, Atlanta attorney, and he he pretty well got fired, and a new attorney got involved with Evander. Well, with the with the dealership going south, everybody was suing everybody. <laughs> General Motors, all of a sudden, they they. Uh, they they forgot they signed anything about a minority program. They didn't they didn't acknowledge anything about a minority program at all. So here I thought, forget about the cheese, just let me out of this trap. You know, I wasn't I was all I wanted to do, I wanted to be in the car business. That's it. Well things just got real hairy and uh, uh, Evander obviously he was getting advice from people. Uh, in my mind, I had all the documents. I was in no problem. And I knew General Motors at that particular time was in the wrong. So I spent whatever money I had wanted to spend on that lawsuit. And uh, I, I became, I'm sure, Evander was mad at everybody because Evander was a boxer. You know, he didn't, not to his benefit, uh, he didn't understand complete business parts of that car dealership. Just like me, I'm not a boxer. I wouldn't understand everything about the boxing world. So uh, things went along. The good news is uh, I had all the documentation, but I had, I was so... I'd been in business so long, I had never been, I'd never been accused of doing anything wrong. And you know how things go, I knew I didn't do anything wrong. I had all the backup in, in paperwork, but still I was so upset. And I was upset with Evander, and likewise Evander was upset with everybody. He was upset with his past manager, his, his attorney, uh, me, General Motors, everybody. So uh, I was so upset, uh, I, and I loved going to the boxing matches. My dad was a professional boxer in the early years. And uh, so right before the uh, uh, Evander fault in, in, uh, in the early 90s and mid 90s, he fought Tyson twice. The first fight that he fought, I was so upset with him. Still, I was blaming him, his attorneys, General Motors, same as he was blaming. <laughs> but God, God just, I just had this deal where God came to me and said, look, I need Evander Holyfield a lot more than you at this time. Now, I didn't understand that because in my, I'm a business guy. I had no problem in that arena, no problem in, the, but I thought, I knew I was gonna get this squared away. It might take me years, but I was gonna get it squared away. Well, God revealed to me that, look, I need him a lot more than you and I will take care of you like I've taken care of you in the past. And he had. In addition to that, the church that I was going to was having a special thing about missionaries. And what would happen to a lot of these missionaries in a lot of these countries, just mentioning Jesus Christ, they'd be killed. And how hard it was to even bring it up. It had to be secret, whatever they did more or less like going to some country like Korea and seeing the president of Korea and going up and saying that all the strength that I get is through Jesus Christ. Well, that'd be unheard of. Well, now, after going to church and going over uh, what's happened to all these missionaries and what's happening of people being killed just bringing up Jesus Christ, and how hard of a time getting that message across. The fight is coming up very, like within a week now.
And the, the uh, Evander Holyfield Mike Tyson fight was arguably the biggest fight ever in the history. The only one even came close to that was Muhammad Ali and Foreman in the, the uh, jungle. Now, a lot of people don't realize this, but the fights, these type fights, generate not only all of this pay-per-view, but a lot of these countries over there get the satellite anyway. So hundreds of millions of people normally watch a major fight like this. And it's watched in hundreds of countries. In some of the biggest countries in uh, boxing is North Korea is one. It's huge. They're, they're a big boxing. So you're, you're uh, Kim Young Woo or whatever his name is. He's watching these fights. And uh, now you can picture a missionary going in and telling him that we want to sit and talk about Jesus Christ. Well, after he got his head cut off, you know, you can go from there. So here are the fights coming up. Hundreds of millions of people are going to watch this fight. So all of this is happening to me in a couple of weeks. So not only that, I'm, I'm still, you know, before that, I was upset with Evander again. Evander's upset with me. Everybody's upset with everybody. So I'm not going to a fight. So I'm going to watch it on TV. So I'm watching it on, I'm watching it on TV and it was, it was, it, it just sort of all came to me. And uh, I pictured, I pictured a six year old kid over in one of these little countries sitting up in the stands watching this fight. The fight was unbelievable. Evander Holyfield was an unbelievable underdog. He looked like a goddess up there. He looked like Hercules. Evander Holyfield, a lot of people don't know this, he had a 30-inch waist and a 19-inch neck. Now, how do you do that? And uh, in watching this fight, I could see, I mean, it was as clear a day of seeing what he was saying about Jesus. One of the biggest surprises in boxing I ever had. Well, you know, I, I get glory to God, and for everybody to know that, you can't choose against God. You can choose against me any time, but when God in bar, Jesus is alive, and, and he the credit for it, and I and I thank God. And why, I, why did you guarantee it with such assurance? But because, you know, when you, when any time somebody put God up there, my, my God is the only true God, and, and anything must bow to God. Well, I, you know, apart from that, apart from religion, because God is here, I hope for all of us. I hope it's, it's, it's just God. Let's get off that. Let's get on the boxing. How did you fight such a brilliant fight? Well, you know, I, you know, I'm led by the Spirit of God. And like I told everybody, whatever the Spirit lead me to do, that's what I would do. And it wasn't nothing that so much that I did. And everybody knew that I would wash up. But with God, I'm not washed up. Did you see, did you see him getting tired? Did you think you could take him on at the end? It, it, went about, it went about tired. It was about what the Lord wanted me to do. About what was going on. And I could see a six-year-old kid, seven-year-old kid, eight-year-old kid asking his dad when Evander's saying, Jesus gave me all this strength. I want to be just like him. Who is this guy he's talking about that gave him all this strength? Now, you talk about these missionaries trying to get in these countries, and they can't even bring it up. And then it just all just came together. It was like, I get it. Well, as God always does, he did take care of me. I want a sizable settlement in the thing. Evander got released from everything. Everything turned out just the way God revealed it would turn out. And, and as you've seen on that film with Evander, he got his point across about Jesus Christ all over the world. Evander and I later on, we went in business in, in a restaurant. To this day, right now, daily, he sends Bible verses two or three times a day. He is a true 
messenger from God. 